Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome, welcome, welcome to the first Let's Play. The first episode of the first Let's Play for Farming Simulator 22. I'm, of course, C. Watty. For those of you that have been long-time followers, subscribers, and viewers of the channel. For those of you that are new, that have never been here before, that have been brought here by Farming Simulator 22 content, welcome. Welcome. We are here on Hout Baileron. This is the map that I'm going to be starting my first Let's Play on. And we're here in uh, New Farmer mode. And um, I'm playing on three day seasons. Um, or, you know, three days per month um, seasons. Um, and we're going to be basically seeing um, what's occurring, basically. Now, I'm going to be doing a few little bits and pieces and making a few little changes to this farm as we go. However, we need to jump into action straight away because if we go to our map and we have a look and see what land we own. We own this little four plot of land over here. This, we own, So we've got three fields currently, uh, one of which has nothing on it. Uh, one of which has been recently harvested. Um, okay, now needs to be um, uh, cultivated. And we've got one field that is ready to harvest, which contains wheat. Um, according to the map, and this could be a, a little bit of a bug at the minute with the game, which giants are going to address in a patch in ne the next coming days and weeks and stuff there's the train um there's a couple of little issues in the game at the moment that people kind of have to kind of play around um i have done obviously on launch day for the game i did an eight hour live stream um and we you know we we found a lot i played on this map i also jumped over onto the elm creek map which is the one i'm doing um, my um, multiplayer server on currently so I've played on both maps and uh, yeah we, we've discovered and encountered a, a few little launch day issues if you like um, Right, That's, so I need to have the engine running now in FS22 to be able to adjust my um, combine he header. Anyway, we're going to get the harvesting done on this field first, and then we're going to look at basically seeing what we can do to adjust and um, repair the other fields. Now, interestingly, I'm dropping straw. Um, do we have a method for collecting straw? Do we have a baler or a loading wagon in our starting equipment lineup? Hmm. Could be we don't. But dropping straw may not be the most useful thing I'm doing. But yes, we're, we're starting on new farmer mode, which means basically I've only got 100 grand in the bank to begin with. Uh, but that does mean we get to start with four pieces of land. We get to start with some very, very basic equipment. Um, we've got a house, we've got a silo, we've got a hayloft. Um, so, you know, no worries there. Obviously, when we've got one field to harvest now, which will give us some wheat, which will give us a little bit of income. Um, but we're, we're not really going to be making a lot of money very soon because we're going to have to. Um, we're going to have to 
re-prep all the all the fields after this we're going to, so like i say if we do need to plow all the fields i'm gonna to have to plow all three fields i'm then probably going to need to lime spread all the fields um from my experience as i say live streaming yesterday um having plowed these fields um we will have to stone pick then there will be rocks <laughs> the plow will <coughs> excuse me the plow will bring up rocks to the surface and uh, we will need then need to get a machine to help us remove those and then of course we'll need to do our our, 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 our seeding and planting now because of the time of year we're in we're in august if you look up in the top left hand corner of the screen um, now I'm playing with my, my, my game user interface scaled at its absolute smallest. So I've made all my HUD as small as it possibly can be in the game settings. If you're wondering why my like speedometer, my mini map and why the bar, like the, say the bar in the top left is so small, that is why I try to keep the game screen as clear and as clean as possible when I'm playing. So I, I don't tend to make the user interface too overbearing again i'm playing on a i'm playing on a 42 inch tv um but i'm only playing at 1080p resolution i'm my my tv is not a 4k tv so i can't play at a higher resolution so unfortunately um i make my um graphic user interface quite a bit smaller um, to tr so it, it doesn't dominate and encroach too much on the actual game window here. So we're doing the harvesting and I appreciate everyone's going to be shouting at me straight away in the comments saying, hey, you're working the wrong way around the field. And you're quite right. For those of you again that have watched my FS19 videos, you will know I'm a bit of, normally a bit of a stickler for the pipe of the harvester, this wonderful thing here. That allows you to unload the harvester and empty the wheat into a trailer or auger or wagon or whatever. I'm normally, I'm normally a bit of a, uh, a stickler for that must always be on the side opposite <laughs> the crop. So it can always be accessed by a vehicle or another player or whatever. So I would always suggest um harvesting in a in a clockwise direction if you're using my patented spiral technique from fs19 um i would suggest always working clockwise with a combine harvester because the pipe is on the, the left hand side of the machine it can differ with some of the other harvesting equipment in the game um when we get into potatoes sugar beets and things like that those machines tend to be a little bit awkward because they put the pipe on the opposite side. Those machines tend to have the pot unloading pipe on the right. So in those cases, you kind of, with those machines, you probably want to be harvesting in a anti-clockwise manner. If you're doing, you know, a spiral system. A lot of people will typically, generally when harvesting, do a quick headland round the field, which basically means take off the first edge on all the sides of the fields go around the edge of the basically the edge of the field which will create a little bit of a gap and a little bit of a space for you to turn around um park equipment park your tractors and trailers your trucks and trailers etc where you're not going to be using the main tracks or paths between the fields like i say we're, we've got a crossroads here we've got four different tracks but like i say if you go if you don't do a headland, you, you're kind of going to be forcing yourself to turn around on this bit here. There's the risk that you might drive into someone else's field and someone else's crop. And whilst in the vanilla game here, in, in, in the farm sim game, um, there is no penalty for driving over another farmer's crop or onto an AI farmer's field. I just find that bad etiquette. <laughs> so I try not to do it. Um, in FS19, we did actually get a mod 
release that actually find you for trespassing onto land that you did not own. Um, it would be nice if that makes a quick comeback to Farming Simulator 22. And I'll definitely install that. And it actually caused, if you did drive onto uh, land that you didn't own, it you actually did cause crop destruction. Hence why you got penalised. Right, we're currently at 52%. Um, this is not the largest harvester in the world. But, you know, day one, it's a fairly decent one. In fact, actually, to be perfectly honest, because we're playing with Seasons, because Seasons is now an integral baked in to the game part of Farming Simulator, um, there's probably not a lot of reason to actually own a harvester and have it sitting on the farm. Because when you come into the the, the growth cycle here, look, <coughs> the crop calendar, you can see wheat, uh, wheat can be planted in September and October. It then can only be harvested the following year in July and August. So it's nearly 10 months between planting and harvesting. Okay. Some of the crops have a slightly smaller gap in their planting crop calendar, but it tends to be about 10 months between planting and harvesting in FS22. So my feeling is, and again, this is my feeling, combine harvesters are really expensive bits of equipment. If you go into the store and have a look, they run at hundreds of thousands. Is it worth paying hundreds of thousands to buy a machine that is just going to sit doing nothing for 10 months of the year? Um, probably not. You're probably better off um, keeping that money in your bank account and using it on other things. And instead, when you need to harvest, much like farmers do in real life, um, lease lease the harvester for the period of time that you need it and then once once the harvest is over um you know return it <laughs> you're not paying for it paying for a machine to sit gathering dust so what we might do or what i might do after i've done this harvest and i've harvested this field I might actually sell this harvester because that will give me a little bit of cash straight out of the gate that I can spend on other tools and equipment that we are going to need. Like I say, I've already mentioned, we do not have a plow. So if the fields need to be plowed, according to the map screen, and I need to invest in a plow, or I need to invest in a subsoiler, neither of which is going to be cheap. Um... I've also, as I've also mentioned, we don't have currently any way to collect the straw. We don't start with a baler. We don't start with a loading wagon. So again, um, that's something I need to rectify because we might as well use the straw. We might as well collect it. We might as well um, sell it and get a little bit of money back for the um, straw. Plus, down the road, we will need a loading wagon or a baler for doing grass and hay and silage and things like that. Um, so, um, it's probably worth investing in one of those. Um, it would be more beneficial if the contracts, if, if, if we could, whilst doing, say, like harvest contracts, if we was allowed to collect straw, on the contract missions in the game um, that would be greatly appreciated because then that makes those more profitable um, I am aware currently I am aware currently and I'll just uh, uh, explain this when we reach the bottom of the field here um, When we go into the, 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 the menu and we go to the contract system, 
just down here. There are, right at the moment, there are a couple of harvesting contracts. There's wheat in field nine, oat in field 12. Um, at the moment, there's a little, there is a bug in the game with harvest contracts. We have seen this before in the past, long time farm sim players. Uh, we saw it when Farming Simulator 19 released. We saw it then when the Seasons mod was released for Farming Simulator 19. Um, we saw it come back again when Giants released Precision Farming. And it seems once again, the bug has returned with the release of Farming Simulator 22. But sometimes when doing harvest contracts, despite the fact that you harvest everything on the field and you deliver every single piece of the crop piece of the fruit to the um, required destination the contracts aren't completing in fact i've seen photos already that people have been posting of their failed contracts um and some of the harvest contracts are only getting to like 89 percent complete and there's nothing left for the player to harvest, nothing left for the player to deliver. Um, I can let you know right now, as of recording this video, Giants is aware of this issue and it is on the list of things that is fixed for the incoming patch. Whenever the uh, patch, obviously, um, the, first, the first game patch, game update is released to fix some of the issues that players are experiencing here on um, on launch. Um, obviously, things have been impacted a little bit um, in regards to Giants working. Uh, again, for those of you not terribly familiar, Giants are a German German based um, developer or Switzerland based development uh, developer. Um, and obviously in that region of the world, in the Germany, you know, Switzerland, Austria, Hungary, you know, all that part of the world, um, they've recently, as of literally this week, um, the governments in those countries have, have basically announced that everybody must um, work from home for the next month until the new year um, to try and reduce um, obviously, COVID issues and um, uh, normal flu and winter virus issues and stuff. So, um, yeah, it's come along at a bit of a bad time, really, for everybody, that. <laughs> because that means, obviously, that a lot of the Giants staff um, and, and team are now all going to be working at home. They're not working together. They're not in the Giants' offices, which means that, um, yeah... It's going to slow, make, slow things down a little bit. <laughs> oh, crop destruction. I got full and I've destroyed a load of stuff. Oh, terrible. Right, we need to go and empty that. So we need our trailer. Mm. Now, we start with very, very small, tiny little tractors like this. Um... We've got a, a New Holland somewhere, and we've also got a Massey Ferguson tractor. They're not the biggest. Oh, I've got the... Um, I've got the uh, gear, gear selector thing. Manual gears enabled. weird how it works on some vehicles but doesn't work on all of them also means that for me to zoom out i've got to actually stop driving the vehicle because if i'm driving the vehicle and press the up or down um buttons on my controller's d-pad that changes gears and doesn't zoom the camera in and out which i'm more used to I'm going to play with the manual gear option enabled for now because obviously people obviously new to the game might want to um, see and experience that. Um, however, it's one of those things that unless I start playing the game with my steering wheel, my actual um, Thrustmaster wheel and pedals and everything, um, I might turn off the um, 
um, manual manual gear, manual gears, manual transmission, and go back to automatic um, because it just makes it a little bit easier. Like I say, when you're in a vehicle and you're zooming in and out with the camera, um, it's 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 much nicer to be able to zoom in and out with the D-pad rather than having to keep stopping and zooming in and out or I go to zoom out and all I do is change gears again for controllers for people playing with controllers I appreciate there's a very limited amount of buttons for giants to use and there has to unfortunately be some overlap with um, button um, key, key bindings on controllers um, so yeah the camera zoom in and out being on the same buttons as the um, gear gear shifting up and down is a little bit um, <laughs> a little bit frustrating when you've as I say you've spent you know over well over 5,000 hours playing farming simulator 19 where the up and down buttons on the d-pad only control zooming in and out it's the same for um, uh, shifting between ranges, um, the gearbox range, high range, low range, mid range, on the, the 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 tractors and vehicles which have obviously different ranges in their gearboxes, different range transmissions. Um, to do that, whilst holding the accelerator button on the controller, you have to press the D-pad left or D-pad right. And again, for those of you that played Farming Simulator 19 or Farming Simulator 17. You all know that D-pad left and D-pad right tabbed you either to the next vehicle or the previous vehicle in your um, fleet of equipment. So, yeah, <laughs> yesterday, yesterday it was a it was a bit of a learning curve for me during the live stream. Sometimes I, I went to change gearbox and I would change vehicle. <laughs> Sometimes I wanted to uh, change vehicle and all I would be doing would be sitting there changing gears. <laughs> so expect moments like that to happen in this Let's Play. But we're getting the heart first, this field harvested. Like I say, once this field is harvested, our work is pretty much going to be... Um, re-preparing these fields getting these fields then completely repaired so making sure they are in the absolute best condition for putting and planting our next crop into so that will involve things like um, plowing or subsoiling fertilizing um, lime spreading stone picking so those are things we're all going to do um, we will probably look get uh, see i'm thinking to myself again that we're probably going to end up having to do a lot of leasing a lot of equipment leasing because um i don't know what just happened then something restarted on my pc Let me just check that my recording has not been affected by whatever just happened there. Uh, is that working? Yeah, that's still working. OBS is still recording. Uh, looks okay i don't know what happened there my all my usb devices just um randomly disconnected and reconnected um, fortunately my microphone has not been affected um, i was still capturing audio it's all good whether i kicked a cable or something maybe under the desk but yeah, 100 grand does not go very far in this game. 
Um, as we will see when we start looking at the equipment that we're going to need to reprep a lot of these fields. Um, there's a lot of equipment that seems to have had its prices massively increased in this year's game. Um, things like ploughs, things like fertiliser spreaders have gone up in price quite a lot. And the actual range of options in what we can actually choose and buy has actually decreased. So we have less options in those categories for what we can buy, what we can use currently. Um, but the prices are, are very, very high. Um, so it's a, it's a very um, expensive business <laughs> and one of the things returning players from farming simulator 19 will notice is the economy system in the game has been quite quite extensively changed um, a lot of the crop pricing fruit pricing on in the game has been drastically reduced uh, and lowered um, again from my early early sort of looks at this game silage still seems to be the money maker as it always has been in farming simulator games but probably more so this year because of the the reduction everything else has had i don't know if that's because we've seen the um the production chains implemented whereby basically giants with the production chain system now in the game you 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 can't you're 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 more expected to take a crop like this wheat i'm harvesting now and you're 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 expected really to turn that into something else to use that to make another product that is ultimately more profitable when it comes to selling um there's not a lot of there's not a lot of profit to be made from just selling the raw materials is kind of what i'm getting at if you're just taking wheat off a field and selling it or barley or oat or canola or soybeans or whatever and you're just taking that basic crop and selling it you're probably not going to make a lot of profit very fast if however you can turn that product into something else and then you sell that product that is where the money is and i think that's what's going to take certainly people who haven't had experience of productions or factories in the past maybe people who didn't play with mods in the previous game um it looks like it looks like my trailer is full hmm Yeah, 8,000 litres. Right. What I'm going to do... Is I'm going to briefly, temporarily, just store this in the silo. I'm not going to take this off and sell it. What I may do is take the trailer off and sell. Because I'm not a big fan of... Um, the swivelly axle... Trailers. <laughs> um, like this like this this particular trailer um, the swivelly axles I'm not a big fan of typically um, I would sooner have um, just a direct no front no front axle just a tow bar to the tractor and then all the all the all the actual pivoting of the trailer is controlled about the um, the rear wheels so we'll probably end up taking this um, we'll probably end up taking this tractor uh, this trailer to the store and selling it actually almost oh, empty No, it just won't empty if the engine's not running. Mm -hmm.
Right. I've got to be careful. Another thing I'm, I'm doing as well, out of force of habit, I'm driving like the harvester here and currently I've got the header selected. So if I want to fold the harvester, I need to have the harvester selected. So to do that, you have to, on the controller, you have to press the Y button or the triangle button if you're using the PlayStation controller. And yeah, the problem for that is whilst I'm also driving the vehicle and I'm holding the accelerator, which is obviously the right trigger on the controller, when I'm holding the right trigger and I press the triangle or Y button on my controller, that changes the, the game speed in game. If you look up in the top, top right, uh, top right corner underneath the time, 9.13, I'm currently playing on two times game speed. If I'm driving though, and I press the Y button, you can see the time is going up. Same as if I'm pressing the brake button. If I press the brake, the left trigger, and press the Y button or the triangle, it decreases game time. Um, game speed. In previous farming simulator games, that wasn't possible. You could only change game speed when you were out of the vehicle. So you'd have to get out of the vehicle, hold the trigger, press the um, Y button or triangle, and that would increase or decrease the, um, the game speed. Um, in this year's game, you can control the game speed whilst inside a vehicle, which, like I say, is a little bit of an issue. For me, because again, if I'm trying to switch between tools and implements whilst I'm driving, that doesn't work, but I'm changing the, the game speed. I'm sat there trying to trying to select the trailer, and it's not selecting the trailer, but up in the top corner of the screen, I am adjusting the game time. There's a couple of little, for me, for me, obviously, muscle memory from Farming Simulator 19. Um, there's a few things about the FS22 currently that put the um, key bindings um, and button options that just to me are a little bit weird, don't make a whole lot of sense. Uh, for example, my biggest gripe and biggest complaint at the moment is that when you press the start button or options button on your controller to open the game menu, you can't exit the game menu by pressing the same button. The only way to exit the game menu is to press the B button or circle button on your controller, which has the unfortunate side effect of immediately enabling the cruise control for me with my with with my buttons, how I've got my controls laid out. Um, it, it, it immediately enables cruise control. So your vehicle takes off. For people playing with default keybinds, um, you probably notice that when you exit out of the game menu, you're immediately hiring a worker. <laughs> um, right, so next task then. Having just done our harvest, um, we could probably do with some straw. Couldn't we? Uh, I should have another tractor somewhere. I have a blue one. There's my red one. a vehicle at the moment. There's my truck. Where is my other tractor? Because I'm sure I've got another one. Oh, he's parked down there, look. Um, I couldn't see him for looking. He's parked all the way over here. 
and it looks like he has got our, our cedar. He's got our little cedar lined up. Okay. Pick up the front weight. beacons off right um we'll bring this back to the farm i'm just changing through me me me, me uh, gear ranges So there's my blue tractor, my little Valtra. Um, so I'm just wondering what we should do equipment wise. Because we do have, like I say, um, we do technically, according to the map, we have to plow all three fields. Um, we also need to lime spread every field. And we also need to fertilize every field. Right. So that means I'm going to need some more equipment. Uh, if we look at our, what we own currently. Um, we've got a, a little cultivator. Two and a half meter cultivator. Um, and we've got a little three meter cedar. That's it. Um, we've got no straw collection. But we haven't got a baler. Uh, we haven't got a loading wagon. Um, I'm just wondering if there's anything in the second hand sales that there really isn't. So plows, basically, if we want to plow, uh, I mean, that one is nice, but suddenly in this year's game, this plow requires 300 horsepower to pull. Um, we don't have that. We don't have a tractor capable of that. Even that one at 220 horsepower is perhaps a little bit beyond what our, our vehicles are capable of. Um... And a two and a half metre plough is going to take absolute days to harvest, um, plough these fields. Um, so that brings us on to... Um, we could go down the road of a, a spade, spader. They re only require 200 horsepower. And that's four and a half meters. That's quite nice. Or we could obviously look at a subsoiler. Again, four meters. Because hmm. our limiting our limiting factor here is going to be what can the, the tractors that we start with pull. And if we look at our starting tractors. Uh, 135 horsepower on the stayer. Uh, are they classed as mediums? Massey Ferguson, 170 horsepower. I don't think that has any other options. It sadly does not. Um, and the Valtra, 
um, only has 190 horsepower. So we're quite lacking when it comes to vehicles um, with a bit of um, bit of oomph to them, shall we say? Um, I'm almost, I'm almost inclined. I'm almost inclined to say what we want to do, possibly, day one, and I know some people won't be happy about this. Is maybe sell the Massey and the Steyer. Um, so probably sell this tractor and the trailer. And then we probably sell this tractor. Maybe the cultivator. Uh, and we get maybe either a spade or we get a subsoiler. It's an option. It's an option. Um, we want to start out really with, like I say, we do need the missing the missing objects. So I'm going to put that there for the moment. Right. Uh, I wonder if I could be a little bit sneaky. Put that on the front. I can. <laughs> right, we're going to take these to the store, everybody. Now, this tractor doesn't seem to have a beacon. Oh. Right, what we're going to do, we're going to sell, basically we're going to sell both of the, all this equipment. We're going to sell the other tractor and trailer, the Stayer. We're going to get another medium-sized tractor with a bit more oomph to it. Um, we're going to get a trailer, which doesn't have the front swivelly axle. And we're going to get ourselves a spade system. Spader. Um, I think. Inst which we can use instead of a plow. Right, we want to... Uh, Sell, uh, sell that, sell that, and sell that. There we go. Problem solved. Um, like I say, we're going to get rid of this tractor and... the trailer as well. And then we can buy some lovely new machines. Now, we haven't made a lot of money from selling those three items so far. We've made literally 125000 So, I do think we will be doing some leasing. I don't think we're going to be buying any equipment and owning it outright. Um... We just can't afford to. We can't afford to at this stage. Our funds are limited. Right. 
Right, we have got 313,000. Let's have a look then. So we're going to go with me. We're going to stick with medium tractor for the time being. Um, now, Fent, straight away, 246 horsepower. That would be nice. That would be nice. Um, the Massey Ferguson 7720 will do 280. Uh, the Massey Ferguson MFAS will do up to 325. A little bit lighter. Um, There's the K7 200 Pro Series, which will do 261 horsepower. Um, let's have a look at one of these masses. Uh, It's going to look rather stupid. Uh, do we? Uh, I'm going to give it with 325 horsepower. That's what we're going for. So we're going to take this one. Um, we're going to lease it. 13,000. We are also going to get ourselves. Right. We want. We're going to go for the spade, didn't we? Spader. We want one of these four and a half meters. Yes, we'll lease that. Um, we got rid of the normal cultivator. We got rid of the cedar, so we're going to need a cedar. Um, Only does seed. Uh, I think we're probably going to go grab one of these. We'll lease that for the first year. Uh, we're going to need a fertilizer. We're going to need lime spreading and fertilizer spreading. So let's go for the bradle. We're going to need the extensions on it. Uh, we'll put it onto narrow tires. We'll add the spreading discs. We'll lease one of those as well. Right. Um, and then we wanted something for collecting straw, didn't we? It's going to be, for is it forage wagon? I think we probably go for one of these. Which we can use to do the straw straight away. Right. 
there we go then folks so there's uh, uh, some nice new shiny equipment for us um we'll put this equipment to use in the next episode of the series we will um so thank you everybody for watching today's episode really hope you've enjoyed it i will be back with the next episode in the series very very soon but for now from me it's thank you and goodbye stay safe everybody take care and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe the video